This portion of the video is sponsored by URCDKey. URCDKey is an online web store that offers software keys and game keys in a very competitive price and without the hassle of going to a physical store. One of the most frequently used software keys is none other than a Windows 10 key and you can get a legit one from URCDKey for only 17 US dollars. But since you're awesome, you can also use my code BL20 to get an additional 20% off and get it for only 13 US dollars or around 700 pesos. You can purchase using your Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, and more. And once you get your key, they also have an instruction on how you can activate your software. So check the link below and don't forget to use our code for an extra discount. Thanks to URCD Key for sponsoring this part of the video. Hi Brawlies, Marvin here from TechBeerl.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy beerls. And today, thanks to our sponsors, Asus and PC Express, we're doing another PC build and this time it's around the tough gaming ecosystem featuring the new Asus Tough Gaming B550M Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. And what's special about this build is that you can actually purchase a similar build from PC Express. So essentially, you'll have an idea about the performance you will get in this video. And lastly, this is a no-compromise build which means we'll be focusing on performance to value ratio. With that being said, let's get into it. Alright guys, let me start by introducing all the components that we're gonna use in this build. So for the processor, we're going to use the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 processor with 6 cores and 12 threads. And this is actually a popular choice for a budget to mid-range build with its good balance between performance to price ratio. With this processor, we should be expecting decent gaming performance as well as for productivity tasks and multitasking. Now to cool our AMD Ryzen 5 3600 processor, we have the Cooler Master ML240L RGBAIO, which features a dual chamber pump with, well, of course, RGB. As for the included fans, it features a fairly decent 2000 RPM with a good airflow rating of 66.7 CFM. For the case fans, we're going to use the Inwin Series Loop ASL120 that can run up to a maximum of 1800 RPM with an airflow rating of 50 CFM. It also features addressable RGB with a ring type design. For storage, we're going to use the Kingston KC600 256GB SSD. And fun fact, if you purchase this build from PC Express during their promo period, you'll get a free 256GB Team Group MS30 M.2 SSD. So that's actually pretty awesome. Now, I mentioned that this build is going to be around the tough gaming ecosystem. So for our memory, we're going to use the T-Force Delta RGB 16GB 3200MHz CL16 Tough Gaming Edition. So as you can see, we have the patented tough gaming design with this sort of military camo and yellow accents. And for our power supply, of course, we're gonna use the tough gaming edition of the Cooler Master Master Watt 650 watts 80 plus bronze. Now, although this is only a semi-modular power supply, I didn't have any issues with it in terms of cable management, as I'll show you later in this video. And 650 watts is more than sufficient to power all the components on this build, so we're good here. As for our graphics card to push pixels for this build, we have the Asus Tough Gaming 1660 Super OC Edition with 6GB of GDDR6 memory and has a base clock of 1530MHz, a boost clock of 1815MHz, and an overclock boost clock of 1845MHz. It also has 1408 CUDA cores which are important for video editing and in general should provide us with a decent high refresh rate performance at 1080p on most titles. And now for the highlight of this build, we have the new Asus Tough Gaming B550M Plus Wi-Fi. Of course, it is now ready for the 3rd gen AMD Ryzen processors without the need of a BIOS update and features an enhanced power solution with 8 plus 2 DRMOS power stages with pro cool connectors and military grade tough components partnered with a decent cooling solution with VRM heatsinks, passive chipset heatsink, M.2 heatsink and 4 fan headers including a CPU of fan header. It also has a variety of interfaces and most importantly, it features both standard 12V RGB and 5V addressable RGB headers. In terms of storage, you have two M.2 slots with one PCIe 4.0 and a PCIe 3.0 which both work in SATA mode as well and you have four SATA 6GB per second ports and a variety of USB 2 and 3 headers. And last but not the least, the ASUS Tough Gaming B550M Plus Wi-Fi supports the latest Wi-Fi 6 technology, so you have a sort of future-proofing with this new motherboard. Now, we'll put all of these components inside the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L chassis. Alright guys, with all the components introduction out of the way, let's finally build this, shall we?
Alright, so building inside the Cooler Master Master Box K300L for the most part is actually quite easy. In fact, I didn't encounter any significant issues and I'm thankful that the Cooler Master ML240 RGB AIO was able to fit on the top exhaust with just a hairline of clearance with a T-Force Delta RGB RAM. Cable management is fairly decent with an abundance of space at the back and you can even put cables inside the front of the power supply if you're into that. As for storage space, we have two 2.5-inch SSD or HDD mounting options with a single 3.5-inch HDD tray below the motherboard cutout. I also like the fact that we have a removable dust cover on both the front side and the top side with this stylish pattern that gives the chassis a little bit of a premium look. Now, the only thing that I don't personally like with this case is the side panel with a rather thin acrylic side panel. On the other hand, the side panel I.O. is adjustable and can be put in any side of the chassis and the screws at the back serves as the rubber feet should you choose to lay the chassis sideways. Overall, in terms of the build experience, it is super easy even with a semi-modular power supply and I think anyone can build around this chassis. Okay, so now that we finally built our tough gaming PC, let's see how it actually performs, shall we? But before that actually, let me just pop the complete specifications on the screen so that you can check it out. I'll also pop on the screen the specifications of our comparison builds and my benchmarking methodology so that you can have an idea how I came up with these results and what other things were observed to make our data as accurate as possible. Alright, let's start with our CPU benchmarks. In Cinebench R15 and R20, I actually did two different tests for both using the standard fan curve and max fan speed just to see if there will be a significant difference in performance depending on the thermals since the Ryzen XFR or Auto Boost feature highly depends on the cooling headroom. So as you can see, indeed, there is a difference ever so slightly especially on the multi-core performance. Now in Geekbench, which is a multi-platform CPU and GPU benchmark that is also available for smartphones, our ASUS Tough Gaming PC build performed decently well with a single core score of 1,252 and a multi-core score of 7,143 and with a graphics score of 62,527 for the ASUS Tough 1660 Super. Now, in Blender's built-in BMW benchmark, our ASUS Tough Gaming PC build was able to finish the task using the CPU for about 3.85 minutes while finishing the same task for about 1.52 minutes using the ASUS Tough 1660 Super graphics card. I also tested our new build in the actual Blender render image using the Junkshop demo file and it was able to finish rendering the image for about 2.33 seconds. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do the same test on my previous builds but moving forward, I'll definitely include this on our testings. Alright, so moving into our graphics card benchmarks, here are the rest of the 3 d Mark benchmark results. And now for our overall real-world performance testing for gaming, I decided to test our ASUS Tough Gaming PC build on these most popular FPS games including Valorant, so let's get into it. In CSGO, which is still a very popular FPS game even though Valorant now exists, our new ASUS Tough Gaming PC build can easily crunch FPS in CSGO with an average of 252.33 FPS and a still pretty decent 1% low of 147.33 FPS at 1080p, so you can pretty much buy a gaming monitor with up to 240Hz and you can easily maximize those frame rates in CSGO. Now in Valorant, which is the latest FPS game that I am currently addicted to and streaming every night, fb.com slash techbeerall by the way, as expected with a fairly lightweight game like this, our ASUS Tough Gaming PC build can blast over 300 FPS on Valorant which is pretty awesome. So in theory, you can still play at high frame rate in Valorant at 1440p resolution. Next in Call of Duty which I left for Valorant, our new PC build can still push decent FPS especially given the fact that Call of Duty Modern Warfare is a pretty high intensive game for both CPU and GPU. Our new build can still provide an average of up to 94.67 FPS with a decent playable 1% low 78 FPS. Now in Apex Legends, which is still a very popular battle royale game, our new ASUS Tough Gaming PC can push an average FPS of around 112 FPS which is pretty decent with a fairly good 1% low of 91.33 FPS as well. And lastly for our roundup of popular FPS games, in Rainbow Six Siege, which is relatively easy to drive, our new build can push a good average FPS of around 243.67 with a decent 1% low of 172.67 FPS. So as you can see at 1080p, 
you can pretty much play at higher refresh rate and with maximum settings on all of the FPS games that we've tested here. And essentially, 1440p gaming with this PC is definitely possible. Now, to complete this review, of course, we have to take a look at the thermal performance and power draw of our new Asus Tough Gaming PC, so let's get into it. In terms of the GPU power draw using the Cooler Master 650W 80 Plus Bronze, the Asus Tough 1660 Super draws 13.8 watts on idle and draws a maximum 127.2 watts during load, which is me playing Call of Duty since it is the most tasking game I have and I want this test to be a real-world application, so there's that. As for the CPU power draw, since these two builds that we have right here on this comparison both have an AMD Ryzen 5 3600, this is where we can see the difference in terms of power supply efficiency with the Cooler Master Master Watt 650 watts 80 plus bronze drawing more power on both idle and load compared to the Seasonic Focus Gold 850 watts 80 plus gold. But take in mind that the price between these two power supplies is also quite significant. Nevertheless, it is interesting to see this kind of result. Now, I also tested our system for its total power draw directly coming from the wall using an external watt meter, and our new Asus Tough Gaming PC build draws around 98.67 watts on idle and 251.44 watts during load, again me playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now, this is a good result that you can save just in case you're planning on getting the same build so that you can have an idea of what UPS capacity should you get for this particular build. Now moving on to the thermal performance, I conducted several tests in different scenarios, so let's get into it. First, for the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 processor in 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra using the standard fan curve with an ambient temperature of around 28.9, our idle temp using the Cooler Master ML240 RGBAIO is around 42.6 with an average load of 53.5 and with a spike of 69.6 degrees during the entire Fire Strike Ultra benchmark. I also did another test for good measure with maximum fan speed and as expected, the temps became lower with an idle of 37.9 and an average temperature of 49.6. Now during the same test for the ASUS 1660 Super, the idle temp is pretty cool at 37 with a decent average of 52 and with a spike of 66 degrees using the standard fan curve. Now with all the fans at maximum speed, we can see up to 4 degrees difference in temperature. As for our real-world performance test, while playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare again first using the standard fan curve, our processor sits at 63.4 in average with a maximum spike of 79.6 and with all fans at maximum speed, the temps dropped quite significantly with an average temp of 55.2 and a spike of 77.6. In terms of the graphics card during the same test, we can also see a slight difference in performance between using the standard fan curve and with all the fans running at full speed. Overall, all the results are pretty decent for our graphics card during gaming. And lastly, for Cinebench R15 and R20, here are the rest of the test results. As you can see, the thermals benefit greatly with all the fans running at maximum speed, so if you're going to do some heavy lifting utilizing the processor, you might as well run the fans at a higher setting. Alright, so to conclude, in terms of raw performance, our no compromise build right here performs really good at any test that we threw at it, especially for 1080p gaming at balls to the wall settings. Thermals are also fairly decent and you just have to tweak your fan curve to balance between performance and acoustics. Overall, build experience is absolutely easy, performance is more than sufficient for gaming, multitasking and productivity tasks, and for an approximate price of only around 55000 in my opinion, you won't get disappointed with this particular build that we have right here. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching, make sure to check the full article link below. Huge thanks to ASUS and PC Express for making this build video happen. You can purchase this particular build from PC Express, which they call the Commodore package, for again around 55,000 pesos, and you'll have a chance to get a free 256GB Team Group MS30 M.2 SSD. Alternatively, you can also opt for the more affordable Brigadier package with the following specifications. You can check the link below for more information. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and turn on that bell notification for our next build video. Have a great day, guys. You're awesome.